Today, we're going to be talking about becoming impeccable. And first off, what do we mean by impeccability? Um, a quick distinction I want to make before we dive into it. When I say impeccable, I do not mean perfect. People think that, oh, if I'm trying to be impeccable, what I mean is I'm actually trying to be perfect. I don't mean perfect in any sort of way. And in fact, there is no such thing as perfect. Perfect does not exist. And if you're out there and you think to yourself, well, you know what? I am a perfectionist. I'm going to just give you some honesty. We all think that we're perfectionists. We all do. And uh, your perfectionism does not exist. Perfection, perfection, perfectionism is not real. Perfectionism is a mask that you're wearing up to cover up a true fear. And so we always tell ourselves, like, I am a perfectionist. That's the reason why I haven't written my book yet or finished my book. When in reality, you're not a perfectionist. You're just afraid that if your book is not perfect, you will be judged by people. And so therefore, you haven't put it out. Not because you're a perfectionist, but because you're afraid of being judged by people. Or you say, I'm a perfectionist. So, you know, my paintings, they're, I haven't put them out yet. And it's like, no, you're not a perfectionist. You're just afraid of other people seeing your paintings and your heart and soul that you put into this painting being judged by other people. So your perfectionism does not exist. Your perfectionism is a mask that you're wearing over your true fear of not being good enough or being judged by other people or not being smart enough or the possibility of being rejected or other people's opinions or dying alone or whatever it might be. If you think you're a perfectionist, we all think we're perfectionists and perfectionism does actually not exist. What exists is the true fear that's behind it. And so when I say being impeccable, I don't mean being perfect. Impeccability is not being perfect. It is striving to be the best you can be in everything that you do. It means constant, never-ending improvement. If you look at the Japanese word kaizen, K-A-I-Z-E-N, it is constant, never-ending improvement. Just trying to get better is what I mean by impeccable. And when I say impeccable, I'm not just talking about like the biggest things in life. I'm not talking about like being impeccable at the biggest things in life. I'm talking about being impeccable at all of the small things, especially the small things. I care more about the small things, the little teeny tiny things that seem like they don't matter more than I care about the big things because the small things matter so much more. You know, if you think about that, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. I say that all of the time and I love it because I always, I hear it, people around me always saying it as well. It's like the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if you're trying to be impeccable, to be the best that you can be at every single thing that you do, that's going to permeate into all other areas of your life as well. If you're trying to be impeccable with this set, with this rep of the workout that you're doing, that is going to permeate into your relationships. That's going to permeate into your business. That's going to permeate, permeate into your communication skills, into your planning. So I personally care more about how you show up to the little teeny tiny mundane things more than I care about anything else. Because when you show up really well to those things, you show up well to everything in your life. And this is something that I've been sharing with my team personally a lot over the past few months. You know, we have over 30... 30, 30 people that work for us at this point in time, and it continues to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And their results in the business will equal the results in everything that they have in life. So their impeccability and everything they do in the business will go into everything that they have in their life as well. You can't think that, oh, I'm going to just, you know, have a, a really great relationship with my children, but I also happen to have like this this health journey that I'm really not doing well at. No, if you're not doing well at your health journey, parts of that are going to permeate into your relationship with your children. And so if the way you do one thing is the way you do everything, you know, we can think about our health, we can think about our relationships, we can think about all these things, but we can also think about the things that we don't really think about that often. We can bring them to the for forefront of our minds. So like I always say, when you do something, try to do it the best that you can. And so like if you're doing the dishes, are you doing the best that you can? Like most of the time when I'm doing the dishes, I'm thinking to myself, fuck, I don't want to be doing the dishes. Like that's the actual thought that's going through my head. And then I think, okay, well, if I'm here and I am doing the dishes, you know, I'm going to try to do these the best that I can. I could just rinse them off and throw them inside the dishwasher. 
which I do sometimes, or what I could do is I could go, okay, you know what I could do? Instead of just taking this dish and maybe leaving this bowl that has oatmeal on the side of it to quote unquote soak, because you know we all think that we have to soak something. And, and so we're like, well, I'll just soak this, this bowl of oatmeal crust on the side. When in reality, I could just pick something up and I could scrub it off. Right. So it's like when you have the dishes, do you finish eating and just throw your dish inside of the sink? Like I know some people listen to this right now. Your sink looks like a bomb went off inside of it. Right. So if you think about that, like the dishes, whenever you get done eating, do you do you finish the task of eating by taking the dish and doing what you're supposed to do with it? Or do you just throw it inside the sink when you are deciding what you're going to wear in the morning? and you're trying on different clothes. Do you take those clothes and you try on one shirt and then you, you decide to try on another shirt, but then the other shirt that you were just wearing, you throw on top of you know, the, the bed and now you have 17 different t-shirts that are on the bed? Or do you take those shirts and you decide to put them away? And you're not gonna be perfect in this, but it's about having yourself be a little bit better at putting these things away. When you get up in the morning, do you make the bed? When you tell somebody that you're going to do something, even if it's something really small, do you do it? When you say, I'm going to be there at four o'clock, are you there at 4.03 or are you there a few minutes before four o'clock, right? Like the, the, the showing up late, like we all have friends that show up like they're, they're late to every single thing that they do. And that being late to every single thing that they do, showing up a few minutes late is permeating into all of the places in their life. And so if you're going to be there at four, do you get there at 4.03? 405, 410, 415, 430 for some of you guys out there? Or if you say you're going to be there at four, are you there at 350? Because the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. You need to figure out ways to be impeccable. You start thinking to yourself, the way that you interact with people, are you trying to be impeccable? And once again, it's about progress, not perfection. Am I constantly trying to improve at these things? You know, the way that you talk with other people. Are you trying to pay attention and be impeccable with the way that you speak to somebody else? More importantly, are you trying to be impeccable in the way that you speak to yourself? You know, some people, you're really great with other people. You're loving. You'll give them so many affirmations. And then when you, if you were to take the conversation that's going on in your head, it's like verbal abuse to yourself, right? Well, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. You could be really nice to other people, but not nice to yourself. What's that showing you? You know, how often do you say you're going to do something as well and you just don't do it? How many times have you said you're finally going to lose those extra 10 pounds and you don't fucking do it? How long have you been telling yourself that you're going to start that business that you're so passionate about, but you haven't done it? Or how long have you been saying that you're, you, you, you need to look at your business and dive into the finances and dive into the P&Ls and dive into where you can become better, but instead you're deciding to just defer that and not doing it, right? How, how long have you been saying that you're going to work on yourself and, wor and, and read 10 pages every single morning, but you're still not doing it? How long have you been saying that you're going to have a morning routine and start waking up early, but you're still hitting the snooze button three times every single morning? How long have you been telling yourself that you're going to meditate, but you've been skipping it? You've only meditated once in the past three months. Like you've got to really start to think about this. How long, how many times you've been saying that you're going to go to the gym four times a week, but you haven't been in a gym in two weeks. How many times you've been saying that you're going to wake up and do some journaling and have a journaling practice, but you're not doing it. How many times have you said, you know what, I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to buy some more books or I'm going to hire a coach or I'm going to go to some more conferences, but you haven't gone to anything or bought any books in the past couple of years. You've really got to start to think about how you can become more and more impeccable. When you say you're going to do something, do you actually do it? You know, when I, the, the thing that drove me the craziest in the, the first company that I owned and I would have, you know, I had tons of sales reps, like 40, 50, 100 sales reps sometimes during, during the peak hours or the, the peak months of the year. And I, I hated that people would come in and they say, hey, I'm going to do 100 phone calls. And then they'd walk out the door and they did 37 phone calls. Or they said, I want to do 40 appointments this week. And they would do 11 appointments for the week. And it started driving me crazy that people were not doing what they said they were going to do. They were not being impeccable with themselves. And so when you walked into what we called the bullpen, it was the biggest room where we run the team meetings. I literally printed out in huge letters. I'm talking about it was like, I don't even know. It's probably a good four feet wide and three feet high. So when you walked out of the bullpen, you saw these, this phrase above the door and it said, follow through. And that was it. 
follow through. So then when every time we had a team meeting, I would say, hey, how many people out there, you said you were going to do X, Y, Z, and you need to do X, Y, Z. You said you're going to do this, you need to do this. You said you were going to do this, you need to do this. Where else do you think that's showing up in your life? You've got to get better at following through. You've got to get better at following through. You've got to get better at following through. You've got to stop making promises to yourself and then giving up on yourself. Because do you give up on yourself? If you think about that, if you think about, just, just think about this for a second. Imagine if you told somebody you were going to do something and then you didn't do it. You're going to break a little bit of trust, right? And then imagine if you told them a week later, you're going to do something and you didn't do it. You're going to break a little bit more trust. And then a week later, you told them you're going to do something and you didn't do it. And you, again, and over and over and over and over and over again, six months down the road, how much trust do you think that person is going to have in you? Yeah. The answer rhymes with hero. It's zero. They're going to have zero trust that you're ever going to say that, that you're ever going to do what you say you're going to do. So if that person is going to have zero trust in you, what about all of the times that you told yourself you were going to do something you didn't do it? You told yourself you were going to invest in yourself. You told yourself you were going to read. You told yourself you were going to go to the gym. You told yourself you were going to meditate. You told yourself you were going to wake up early. You told yourself you were going to work on yourself. You told yourself you were going to start that business. You told yourself you were going to lose those extra 10 pounds. You've been telling yourself and then not showing up and telling yourself and not showing up. What do you think that is doing to your confidence? What do you think that's doing to your trust in yourself? If you can break somebody else's trust that easily, how easy do you think it is to break trust in yourself? Because you're doing that to yourself sometimes 10 times a day. If you told a friend you were going to show up and you didn't over and over and over and over and over again, eventually you break their trust. Imagine somebody did that to you. Imagine if one of your friends told you they're going to do something they didn't. And they told you you're going to do something they didn't. They told you you're going to do something they didn't. Wouldn't you eventually just stop trusting that person? It's the exact same with trusting yourself. And the, the, the key part of this is that you don't have to be perfect, but you have to strive to be better every single day. You have to strive to be honest with yourself. You have to strive to be honest with other people. You have to strive to be as honest with yourself in every practice that you do throughout your life. Now, you might think to yourself, well, I said I was going to do this thing and I didn't do that. I broke my trust. Immediately, people start to guilt themselves. They start to shame themselves. They start to feel bad about themselves. When in reality, it's like, hey, okay, I screwed up. What am I going to make sure that I do in order to make sure that I don't do this again? And you make small little incremental improvements. You know, if you were to say on a scale of one to 10, one being like the absolute worst and 10 being perfect, where are you on being impeccable in your life? Say it out loud to yourself. You're in a car, say it out loud to yourself. Is it a four? Is it a five, six, seven? Like actually say it out loud to yourself. On a scale of one to 10, where are you on being impeccable with what you say you're going to do? Say it out loud. And then I want you to think about this. What is it costing you in your life by not being higher? Right? So like if you said, you know, I'm a six out of 10 on the impeccability scale, what is it costing you by not being an eight? How much better would your life be? How much better would your relationships be? How much better would your business be? How much better would your health be? How much better would your bank account be if you were at an eight instead of a seven? How much better would your relationship with your children be if you were an eight on the impeccability scale instead of a six? Because life is either hard now and easy later, or it's easy now and hard later. Most of us choose easy now, but if we choose easy now, it's always going to be harder later. You know, so what is the future you missing out on because you're coming up short now? What is your future family or your family in the future missing out on because you're not showing up for yourself? What are your friends missing out on? What's your community missing out on? What is the world missing out on because you choose to cut corners? You choose to cut corners. It's not something that happens just by happenstance. Like, no, you are choosing to cut corners, to not show up, to not be impeccable. And once again, I don't really care about the big things. I care about the small things because the small things are easy to do. But they're also easy not to do. And so if you can do the things that are the small little tiny things that are easy to go and cut corners on, like that dish that has the crusty oatmeal on the, on the inside of it, if you can choose to do those little tiny things when they are done, you will choose to do the hard things, the bigger hard things when they need to be done as well. And then all of those little things, the things in between and the big things, when you actually execute on them, will add up over the next two, three, four, five, ten 10 years to being a completely different life 10 years from today than it is right now. 
but it starts with you deciding that you're going to be freaking impeccable with everything that you say you're going to do. So that's what I got for you for today's episode. If you love this episode, please share it on your Instagram stories and tag me in at Rob Dial Jr. R O B D I A L J R. And I'm going to leave the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission, make someone else's day better. I appreciate you, and I hope that you have an amazing day.